Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Rick Anthony. I'm with the Amazon Inspector team. I have Kashish Wadwa here with me on stage. He's also with Amazon Inspector. And off stage, I have Anki Kumar from Uber Security Engineering, and he'll be joining us in a little bit. So we're really excited to be presenting to you today to talk about the new Amazon Inspector service that we launched on Wednesday. Uh, we're going to cover a couple of items and you know, we'll show you how to use Amazon Inspector for automated vulnerabilities. However, before we get into the talk, uh, we have a quick little fun video that we wanted to show you. So please cut us over to the laptop. Security gaps created by software vulnerabilities and unintended network access can lead to compromised workloads and unauthorized access to data. <laughs> Amazon Inspector is a vulnerability management service. Security gaps created by software vulnerabilities and unintended network access can lead to compromised workloads and unauthorized access to data. Amazon Inspector is a vulnerability management service that is easy to enable across your entire organization with a few clicks in the AWS Management Console. Inspector's integration with AWS organizations simplifies multi-account management and centralizes findings for the security team. Once enabled, Inspector automatically discovers workloads such as Amazon EC2 instances and containers and continually scans them for software vulnerabilities and unauthorized network exposure. Inspector correlates up-to-date CVE information with factors like network accessibility and exploitability, creating accurate and meaningful risk scores to help you prioritize your response to address vulnerable resources. Inspector helps you reduce mean time to resolve vulnerabilities with automation through integration with partner solutions, Amazon EventBridge, and AWS Security Hub. Launch Inspector's free trial to discover your critical vulnerabilities. All right, thank you. Please flip us back. So that is the new inspector in a nutshell. What we wanted to talk to you today about was how did we get there? So many of you may be aware that there is an Amazon inspector that has been in market with AWS since 2015. And that service is being replaced by what we launched today. And we want to talk about how we got there. So we're going to cover that journey. As part of that journey, we're going to tell you what we learned by talking to our customers, what they told us about vulnerability management systems. We're going to tell you about the philosophies that we uh, used from those learnings to develop Inspector. And then we're going to go ahead and introduce uh, Ankit, who's going to tell you about Uber's journey. They were one of our private beta customers who have now oper operationalized uh, Amazon Inspector. And then at the end, we'll, we'll do a, a live demo and we'll, we'll see how that goes. Okay, so Amazon Inspector V1, the one that was launched in 2015, you'll now see us call that Amazon Inspector Classic. That was developed to look like a very traditional kind of point and click vulnerability management system. And we had really good response from customers regarding Amazon Inspector V1. But since 2015, a lot has changed. Even within the cloud, so much has happened. If you look at the pace of innovation here at AWS, you'll understand what I'm talking about. So customers, quite naturally, were asking us to do more with Inspector. And so you know, in, in looking at that, we said, all right, you want us to do more. What should we be doing? And so we talked to customers and said, okay, what are the challenges you have with the products you're using today? And we really had customers come back with four key areas that they were struggling with. Number one, a lot of the solutions they were using, and I think Inspector V1 suffered from this a little bit, is that they really weren't designed for the cloud. The cloud is very elastic. You know, it's very easy for your workloads to spin up instances spin down instances. Customers have even migrated from EC2 onto containers. And a lot of times what customers were saying is, I don't know if I'm even capturing my entire environment. These instances, they spin up very quickly. They run short amount of time. I'm worried that I have some vulnerabilities. That's a problem we'd like you to solve. Number two, we spend a lot of time managing these solutions. 
you know, vulnerability management, it's important, it generates a lot of findings. Our job is to remediate those findings. We don't want to spend time managing software, configuring it, enabling agents, figuring out why they don't work. You know, there's agents for everything. How do we make that better? How do we uh, have one less agent to deal with? Number three, the cloud, again, is elastic, but it's also dynamic. You can very quickly prototype, you can very quickly go to market, and customers are telling us, I'm not sure I'm covering everything in my environment. I have application teams launching things every day. How do I know I don't have gaps? How do I know I didn't miss something? Help us solve that. I don't want to have to go out, discover all my resources, build these dashboards. I want to just solve security problems. And lastly, they, wanted to say, they asked us to say, um, I have more tools. You know, I, I have more things that I need to look at. I have moved from EC2. I've moved over to containers. Help me, help me solve that. So we took all that information. We looked at Inspector V1. We looked across AWS at some of the other services that were out there that were really resonating with with customers and we said, okay, there's two key philosophies that we think we need to use in designing Inspector, the new one that just launched. Number one, we don't want customers to really be focused on those upfront activities such as setting them up, deploying agents, configuration. How do we, how do we really make that super simple? That's gotta be part of the solution. Um, number two, how do we also take away the problem of scanning. Traditional solutions, as a customer, you have to decide what am I gonna scan, when am I gonna scan it, and how am I gonna scan it. You know, that's where gaps occur. So we said, okay, how do we solve that problem? How do we take that burden away of figuring out what that right schedule is going to be? Because customers would always ask, should I be scanning daily? Should I be scaling, scanning weekly? Should I be doing this monthly? Help us, tell us what's the right way to do this. So taking all those factors together, we launched Amazon Inspector, and what we're going to show you is the features that we've launched with Amazon Inspector. We're gonna tell you how those features are satisfying those requirements for customers. We're also going to do a demo, and we're going to show you um, Uber's journey as well. Thanks, Rick. Before I get started, like you saw, the problem with the bug with the video, that was intentional, just to show you how easy is it to find bugs in normal day-to-day -day life and how important is it to uh, remediate those. Going back to Amazon Inspector, now Amazon Inspector not only supports EC2 instances, but also container images that are residing in uh, ECR, which is the Elastic Container Registry. This was one of the biggest change that we have seen across industry. Everyone is moving from EC2 instances to containers, and this became really important, and we heard back from customers a lot that we have to support it. So aligning to the philosophies that Rick pointed out, the first one was, like, security teams should be focused on the back end, like patching, remediating, implementing, compensating controls. They should not be focused on upfront activities, they shouldn't be like deploying agents or trying to figure out if that agent is, is responding back to the console or not. Is that agent like working or not? Is that agent impacting my performance of the instance or not? So all those things we decided to like simplify onboarding, first of all. So similar to other services like Security Hub or Amazon Guard Duty, we have made it really simple for customers to onboard their entire organization to Amazon Inspector. So with potentially one click, you can enable Inspector across all your accounts in your organization. Then what we have done is we provide you a single pane of view across all of your resources and your accounts and across your organization so that you can take your organizational level decisions through Inspector. Like, your central security team will have access to the centralized console, where they will be able to see across the board what is my account, like general posture, what is my environmental coverage, uh, how many resources accounts are we covering, some of the 
resources or accounts which we are not covering, why not? We will give you actionable guidance so that you can avoid any security coverage gap. The third thing that we have done with, uh, in alignment to our philosophy is that we have tried to reduce the number of agents that security teams have to maintain. They have to launch, and like it's just getting crazy out there. So we decided to use the systems manager agent, which is already widely adopted, and we try not to probe the instances anymore. We just use the data that SSM is already collecting anyway, and we do all the processing on our side so that it doesn't impact the performance of the instance. For uh, container images, we don't need any agent. We just get the data of the, uh, of the container image, and we do the processing on our end. Finally, this is one of the most differentiating factors that we have introduced in uh, Amazon Inspector is that now we provide you a highly contextualized score, what we call inspector risk score, to give you the real-time view of your environment. One CVE identified in your environment versus your environment could have different impact, depending on several factors, right? One of your instances could have network accessibility. Your instance might not have network accessibility. And depending on the CVE metadata, we look at if that CV can be exploited remotely versus not, and we look at other parameters also, and we correlate with network reachability results. We look at exploitability data in general, and we have our internal threat intel groups that kind of hunt for uh, CVs being actively exploited in the wild so that we get that confidence score, and we provide that in Inspector. And we are being completely transparent about it. It's not like we, it's a black box. We are not hiding anything. You will see in the console when I show the demo that how did, you, uh, how did we arrive from, let's say, NVD CVSS V3 score, or if the vendor like Red Hat, for example, provides their own score, how did we arrive from that base score to inspector score in the dashboard? So aligning with the other philosophy that we talked about, I personally got a lot of questions from customers. How often should I scan my instances? Like, is one day enough? Is once a month enough? Is, should I scan every six hours, every 12 hours? And this is something, it's consistent across the industry, and we felt customers should not be deciding that. They should not have to like, take the burden on deci of deciding that. So what we do is, now we continually scan vulnerability, or we continually do vulnerability and network reachability scans and I will, in the next slide, cover, I'll do a deep dive into the, what, what do I mean by continual, and uh, other important features or key features that we have identified, like uh, inspector score, et cetera. The, one of the other things that you will see in inspector is that we automatically detect if you patch something now. So earlier, security teams, what they had to do is they had to go and scan their environment and if they find any CVE, they would go and patch it, then rescan it to see if it has been actually fixed or not. And going through all this process is manual effort. It's just too much work, right? So with Inspector, we now automatically detect. If you patch anything, we will detect in almost real time, and we will automatically mark that finding in the Inspector dashboard as closed. So that without any manual overhead, you don't have to do anything. It will automatically close up or close down. Finally, we now are integrated with Security Hub. And also, we, since everything in Inspector is now event-driven, we push all events to EventBridge. And also, Security Hub and container-related findings are also presented in ECR. So like Rick mentioned, there's a concern with security teams in general that they don't want to give the keys to the kingdom to all the developers, all the application teams. They want to provide those results in their persona, what they use in their tools, and centrally security teams should have that visibility, oversight to manage, customize, and just provide that oversight that everything is going right, right? So with... Uh, Inspector, we do that with ECR integration. The same results will be provided in Inspector and ECR. You could, developer could enable Inspector from ECR, or a centralized security team could enable Inspector ECR scanning 
through Inspector Console. So it works both ways. And uh, the last thing about EventBridge, now, since everything is automated, we push an event for a new finding created. If a finding state changes to closed, or if a new instance comes up, or if a new instance goes down, we generate a finding for everything, uh, we generate an event for everything, and we push that to EventBridge. Now, where that is really impactful is that, let's say if you have your ticketing system, right, you can, since Inspector generates everything in real time, you could integrate with your ticketing system where a new finding can easily create a new uh, ticket in, with your ticketing system. And since we do support tags, and if you have different environments, you can tag it to the right application owner. And it will automatically create tickets, as well as if something gets patched, it will automatically close the ticket also because we generate an event for that also. So it eliminates all the friction, the overhead that you have to go through just to manage ticketing system, which is not good, right? So let's deep dive into uh, the key inspector features. We talked about frictionless one-click enablement and multi-account support with AWS organization. We also talked about highly contextualized inspector risk score. This is what we do right now. But in the future, we do have plans to improve inspector score and make it high, even more contextualized. Now, coming back to continual vulnerability management, or what I mean by continual. So the question I used to get quite often during our beta, which ran for about seven months, was that when you say continuous, does it mean it will impact my performance, uh, like instance performance? Do you run it every two hours? Do, do you run, run it every three hours? The answer is no. We do it continually. We monitor your environment, and we monitor the CVE landscape. Now, we correlate if there is any change in your environment. Let's say if you launch an instance or push a container image in ECR, we will automatically detect that. We will automatically trigger a scan. And let's say now you install a new package in your EC2 instance. Let's say OpenSSL. We will automatically detect that in real time, and we will do a delta scan like a really small scan on the change so that it doesn't impact on your, doesn't have any impact on your instance. We do the processing and that's how we can easily provide you findings in real time. Similarly, if we patch something, we automatically detect that also. And on the CVE side, we built an intelligent vulnerability database. And how that works is we consume over 50 sources at the moment and we correlate all the data. We kind of do a lot of analysis on that data. And let's say, if there is a new CVE was published recently, how that will work is, it, we, since we already know in your environment which packages are where, like which all EC2 instances have what packages, which container images have what packages, and when a new CVE is published, we know that these resources will be impacted by it. So we do that in real time. So as soon as a CVE is published, we automatically generate findings for all the resources within hours. So the greatest impact is in, as you know, these days, zero-day vulnerabilities are becoming more and more, more and more, uh, like, frequent. And usually security teams, depending on the size of your organization, takes about, somewhere about a week to a month first to do, like, entire sweep of your, like, of your whole environment, see which all resources are impacted, then patch it, then rescan it to validate, and like, this could take a lot of time. With Inspector, this would take less than, like, a few hours. So that is the real-time impact where you can, without any manual overhead, you can see everything and anything in real time. And uh, with frictionless one-click enablement, we already covered uh, pretty much everything. And it's very similar to Guard Duty or Security Hub where you can assign a delegated administrator that delegated administrator acts as the inspector admin, and that inspector admin can centrally manage, customize, configure, see all the findings in one centralized location through one central console. Now I'll pass it off to Ankit, who is with Uber's security engineering team. Thank you, Kashish. Hello, and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ankit Kumar, and I am a security software engineer with Uber. Uh, the focus of my team is cloud security, and the, over the course of last few weeks and months, we have been uh, evaluating the new inspector solution to see how it integrates with our monitoring solution. So 
Over the next few minutes, I will walk you through the, some of the integrations, some of the high-level designs that we were able to build out. So um, just to look at our compute environment, it might be very similar to yours. So we have fleets of EC2 instances that are both long-lived, that have been running over the course of, say, months, and they might also be running over the course of years. We also have ephemeral instances that come up and go down. They perform a specific set of tasks, come up, go down. And by the nature of EC2 instances, you guys know that it's regional, so we, it's distributed across different regions, accounts, and organizations that we have. On top of this, we also have uh, AMIs. So as we use Amazon machine images, we also have team-specific uh, private images that are used by teams, that are packaged by teams with uh, their own favorite OS flavors, with libraries, with tools and services that they want to use in their environment. So with all of this, um, we had quite a big challenge to solve in terms of uh, vulnerability management because the scale is huge. Some of the challenges, these are some of the high-level challenges. So a lot of you would resonate with these challenges because it's, it's an industry-wide problem. So heterogeneous instances. Well, one of the big uh, good points about uh, cloud is it provides you the capability to spawn up instances that cater to your specific needs, right? Uh, with uh, these heterogeneous set of instances, the bigger challenge is to address vulnerability management or the bigger challenge is to address scanning all of these edge cases, scanning all of these instances which might not be part of the larger fleet. Then agent management is a tedious task. Uh, we need to make sure that the performance of an EC2 instance is not uh, reduced by installing more and more agents. We need to make sure that we strike that balance. We also need image scanning because we have primate images. We want to make sure that all of the images that are being used in our environment are patched from the get-go. And there is always a need for centralized visibility. We need to make sure that we have a bird's eye view of everything that's going on in our environment. Again, patch management needs to go hand in hand with vulnerability management, and it's, it's a big and tedious task. How do we do this? In, in our scale, in the number of accounts that we have, we cannot do this manually, and uh, we wanted something that can scale with our infrastructure. So we use an open source tool uh, called Hammer. This, uh, this tool is developed by the Dow Jones team, and we have heavily customized it to our Uber's need. Very straightforward architecture. You have a trigger, which is event rule in our case. It triggers uh, Lambda functions on an everyday cadence. The Lambda functions in itself will go and check for misconfigurations or identify vulnerabilities. A misconfiguration can be an S3 bucket that is public. We don't want that. It can be an IAM user with no MFA enabled. We want visibility into all of these misconfiguration vulnerabilities across the entire footprint that we have. And after all of the identification is complete, we want to make sure that we have saved it somewhere. We have a source of truth that we can always go back and look at, which is DynamoDB in our case, because we leverage cloud to secure the cloud. Now, how do we scale this particular platform? How do we scale our monitoring system to utilize or to do vulnerability management? It has to be done across all of the accounts that we have, all of the regions that our EC2 instances lies. And if you have used Inspector Classic, you would know some of these steps. You need to make sure that your assessment target is set. You need to make sure that the template runs for the duration of time that you want it to run for. And there are rule packages that you had to set up. And after all of that is done, you, we, we run scans and get the findings. With our monitoring platform, this presented quite a lot of points of failure. So, we, we wanted to make sure the entire pipeline is as reliable as possible because Inspector Classic is a regional service. There involves a lot of troubleshooting when something goes bad, something goes wrong. We wanted something that we can look at from a holistic view, identify all of the challenges, and then uh, just, just get the uh, vulnerability data that we're looking at. How do we do that? inspector, the new inspector. So with the new inspector, all of the older steps are completely gone. Inspector has absorbed the initial steps of setting up your scans into itself. 
And all our hammer pipeline needs to do now is call the get findings API. This is happening in only one account, uh, the delegated administrator account, as Kashish mentioned. We don't need to scale it to all of the accounts that we have. We don't need to scale it to all of the regions that we have. Just one account, all of the regions in that account, get all of the vulnerability data out of that account, and push it again into a DynamoDB table because that's, that's how we built out our monitoring platform. What do we do from that? What, how do we, what do we do from here? We have all of the data now. Uh, the best way that we identified uh, remediation is by opening the very dreaded security ticket. So we built out a CMON, uh, we built out a ticketing platform that we call CMON. What this uh, service does is constantly keep looking at the DynamoDB table entries, identify if there is something added to it, if it is updated, and open a ticket for you. Open a ticket for the end user that owns that particular EC2 instance. This, this happens on a uh, regular basis, so it will constantly keep looking at the DynamoDB table entry. It will try to see if there are records that are updated, and as soon as there is something of an update, you get that update as a Jira ticket. So this, uh, this is a template of one of our inspector tickets. You see that the information presented is very concise. Get to know all of the vulnerabilities that are associated with your EC2 in a tabular format with the remediation steps that are needed to resolve that particular vulnerability. As soon as you do, as soon as you go ahead and resolve something, the ticket will auto-resolve itself, or the ticket will update with the other vulnerabilities that are identified. Over the course of our evaluation, we collected a lot of metrics. You guys must be aware of this fact that uh, whenever you deploy a vulnerability management solution, there is quite a lot of overhead. There is a lot of deployment that you need to do. With this particular solution, it was just a one-click deployment for us. We had already onboarded onto Systems Manager. So uh, all we had to do was uh, enable uh, Inspector on the delegated administrator account, and Akashish will walk you through that step in the demo. And as soon as that was done, within a uh, course of uh, the next few hours, we had the entire environment under one centralized visible console. It also reduced our, our manual overhead to uh, manage the entire solution by 40% because we don't have to now go and look at all of the individual accounts and regions and set everything up individually. One of the great things about this uh, new integration that we built out was we were able to address 87% of our critical vulnerabilities within the SLA that we had. And the biggest driving factor was the instant rescans that Inspector Next provides. So initially with the, the classic version, what we had to do was initiate a scan on a regular cadence. So uh, one day it would scan something, it would identify something. Simon would open a ticket for us. Next day when you fix something, the scan would you would at least have to wait for 24 hours for the rescans to happen, and the feedback would take close to 24 to 36 hours to be updated on the ticket. But with this, uh, as soon as uh, our customers or our end users fixed or patched their system, the ticket got updated within an hour. It was an amazing experience for the end user because they get to know what they have done has actually remediated a particular vulnerability, and it, it drove our numbers up. So that, that's, that's something that has helped us a lot. So uh, how, wh where do we take it from here? Uh, what can we do next? So uh, our, our integration is built out. We want to make sure that we mature it to the next level. What we want to do next year is uh, to make sure that everything that we identify in our environment gets pushed to our Elastic uh, search engine so that we have uh, information about everything that was identified. We also want to build out our auto-remediation pipeline. So in, in, in cases where there is an SLA breach, maybe this pipeline can automatically run and remediate everything. In case where a customer is unable to fix something, they can just mark the ticket as uh, fix it for me, and the same pipeline will run again and fix everything for them. Then uh, systems manager is the prerequisite, right? 
we want to make sure that that is that agent is part of every private image that we have. So we will bake it directly into the uh, AMI making pipeline that we have. One of the things that our fleet users asked us was, how can they proactively approach remediations? Amazon uh, patches their AMIs on a regular basis. So we thought, why not migrate the entire fleet onto the new AMI as soon as that is out in the market? So we want to build out this pipeline where as soon as uh, we get a trigger that Amazon has patched a number of uh, AMIs, uh, all of our fleet users will automatically migrate their EC2 instances onto the new AMI. And with our uh, mergers and acquisitions, we want to make sure that every single thing that we build for us is scalable to them. So we want to build out the centralized integration for everything that we have under Uber. So this brings us to the end of my presentations. If you are interested in learning more about uh, our uh, Hammer Cloud Native and the CMON ticketing part, we have very detailed blogs. It's in two part, and it will give you a good idea about how to replicate the same environment in your infrastructure. Thank you. So before I start with the demo, I just want to call, call out our partners uh, where we have built integrations already. Uh, some of the partners that you will see is we have built integrations in different security areas. So for example, for vulnerability prioritization, we have integrated with Resilien and Vulkan for attack surface management where they use Inspector as the vulnerability management solution, uh, Exonius and XM Cyber. Uh, for Basically, SIM solutions, we have IBM Security and uh, Sumo Logic. And Sneak was one of our, uh, I would say, very important uh, vulnerability data provider. Then we have other uh, partners like Palo Alto, Wiz, Cavern. And for detection and response, we have uh, FireEye, Sophos, and Sentinel One. So I'm going to start with the demo now. So uh, this is the organization that I've set up right now. If you see, the second account is the organization's management account. And the first one is the delegated admin account, which I, which I will set up as the delegated admin for inspector. So before I get started, I just want to call out that I will show four things, like four critical things during our demo. The first thing is the easy enablement piece. The second is uh, the inspector score. I'll show you how did we translate from, let's say, uh, Red Hat or NVD's base score to inspector score. Then I will launch a new instance and will show you how easy is it to just attach an SSM instance role and how quickly inspector picks it up. And finally, the ECR integration. And there are key differences where uh, ECR currently offers a clear based solution natively, which will now be called as basic offering and the enhanced offering will be powered by inspector. And there are significant differences uh, between basic and enhanced. And I would call out three of them, and I'll show you in that demo right now. First is that we not only support uh, operating system packages, we support all programming languages, or most of the programming languages also, including Python, Java, Ruby, Node.js, et cetera. And we provide, we give an option in enhanced if a customer wants to do only one time scan at push or a continual scan where if a new CVE is published, it automatically rescans. The third is, since as you know, containers are comprised of multiple layers, and one base image could be used in multiple uh, images. So we provide the vulnerability view not at the image, not only at the image level, but also by layer, so that it's easier to remediate and fix. So let's get started with the demo. I'm just gonna. So when you log in to Inspector as the org organization management account, this is the first screen that you will see. And all I have to do is, and delegate, that's it. Now what will happen here is that this will delegate that account as the dele delegated admin account, as well as enable Inspector for that DA account. 
Now, what I'll do is I'll, in the meanwhile, I'll log in to the other account. So while Kishish is, Kishish is loading that up, we, we, we do have a, a video that shows all of the capabilities. We just weren't going to have enough time to show it today. Um, but if you look at our website uh, in, in the coming weeks, you'll, you'll be able to download that and watch the whole thing. So let's go to Inspector. So as you can see, as, as soon as you enter or see the first glance at the Inspector dashboard, you will be able to see that we provide the environmental coverage. And I'll click on one of these, uh, one, each one of these in a second. But we provide you at the account level for the DA, how many accounts are being scanned by Inspector, how many instances are being scanned by Inspector. And if there are some not, we will provide you that actionable guidance also. So let's look at account management first. So one of the things is uh, feature is that auto enable scanning for new accounts. So let's say if you add a new account in your AWS organization, you don't have to come and manually enable Inspector anymore. You can just toggle this and you can save it so that any new account added to your AWS organization is automatically enabled. And for the first time when you are enabling, all you have to do is click on this and enable all scanning. That's it. This will automatically enable scanning for all your accounts across your organization. So not only does this solve one of those core problems we heard from customers regarding, I don't necessarily know what's out there, this also helps them prevent any holes from coming in the future by auto-enabling. Yep. And this is what I was talking about. So for each of the instances, we provide you this view, which is scanning continuously. If, For example, this one is not being scanned. Why not? Because the EC2 instance is not managed yet. You have to either install the SSM agent or uh, uh, in, attach that instance role. Now, SSM agent is already pre-installed in a lot of the armies, including Amazon Linux, SUSE, uh, Ubuntu, different versions. So all you have to do is attach an instance role, and I'll show that in a second. But let's go and see how inspector score is really critical. And I will walk you through what a finding looks like also. So let's look at this CVE, Cloud Init. We will show you details like which account ID it is, the severity, and severity is determined by inspector score. And we give you details around which packages are affected, which version, and so forth and so on. And so we provide you inspector score as well as the scores provided by Red Hat, NVD, both CVSS v3 and v2, wherever applicable. And then we provide you details like uh, tags and, you know, for example, cost center tags, et cetera. And if you click on this tab here, inspector score. So this will show you how did we arrive from that base CVSS score to inspector score. So here, if you look at attack vector, which means the CVE can only be exploited remotely, but we found that instance doesn't have any open network path. So it's not that critical anymore. So we adjust the score based on that. and. From there, we get to uh, the severity, and the best part is we do that basic triage and analysis for you. So the risk-based remediations panel that you see, this is what we call top five things on fire. And after talking to several security teams, they were like, there are, the bigger your environment is, there are just so many findings. We don't know what to fix first. So here, we identify top five packages based on how many critical, uh, or how many CVs it has, the severity of the CVs, as well as how many resources it is impacting. So we correlate all that and what we call, as, uh, like I said, five things on fire, so that you can go and uh, patch those first. Now, what I'll do is I will launch an instance because it takes a couple of minutes to instance to get launched. And in the meanwhile, I'll show you how ECR would work. So let's say if we launch an instance, I'm just going to use uh, AL2. And just as a reminder, this was one of the other customer issues that we heard about. So Inspector will see this launch, and it doesn't matter if it's now, tomorrow, middle of the night. Inspector sees it. If there's findings, it generates it. And if it goes down, that trail is still part of Inspector. So all you have to do is here, 
attach an instance rule, and you can create a instance rule for SSM using quick setup also. So all I have to do is this, that's it. Next is basic configuration if you want to add tags and so on and so on. Uh, I'm just going to use an existing security group. I don't need to log in. That's it. So let's see. This is the instance ending in 2.6 D0. So while it, while it launches, I'll show you how ECR piece works. So in the container image, let's see first by layer view. So this is the overall image view where we show you overall findings for this image. And in by layer view, we show you how these vulnerabilities are distributed different, between different layers. So that layer zero is usually the base layer. And as you can see, there are 483 findings there. So you would rather go and patch that first versus having to go and patch all the other things. And since we are integrated with ECR, you can see the same results. The developers can see the same results in their environment. So let's go to repositories. Uh, how this would look like now is basic and enhanced. Like I mentioned earlier, basic is powered by clear, enhanced is powered by inspector. And if you don't want to scan all your repos, you can select prefixes and suffixes on which repos you want to scan continuously, which repos you want to scan only on push. And developers can enable inspector or choose enhanced scanning through ECR. That will automatically enable inspector and vice versa. If central security team enables inspector through inspector, it will automatically change the scanning type to enhanced in ECR. And the same results you will be able to see in these repos. So for example, Node, you will be able to see all the same findings, which is an inspector as well as uh, here. So let's go back to inspector and see if that instance is launched yet. And as Kashish is going back there, just as a reminder, one of the things security teams told us is they don't want to share their security tools. You know, they don't want to provide their developers that view. Now developers can get that ticket, like, you know, the dreaded ticket that Ankit talked about, but they can go into the tool that they're used to using every day and they'll see the exact same information because it's shared between inspector and ECR. So one of the things that you can see here is the new instance that we launched ending in 2.6 D0. It has no findings. We already scanned it, it has no findings. And I'll show you why. So if we go to this, and I'll show closed also. All right, let me, let me go to all findings and uh, show closed because while we launch a new Amazon Linux uh, instance, it automatically run updates. So if there were CVEs that are automatically closed, you can see here that if you look at age, two minutes, three minutes ago, these were automatically closed. Since we track, we scan it immediately as soon as it launches, the auto update takes a couple of minutes to do that. In the meanwhile, we automatically tracked it, we automatically closed it also. So this was the end of the demo, and we can take questions now. And it is hard for us to see you, so if you could stand or something, I think that'd make it a little easier. Uh, yeah, so just to repeat the question uh, for everyone, does this also scan workspaces? Uh, today it does not. Uh, I'll just repeat the question. He was asking if it is available in GovCloud yet. No, not right now, but we are available globally in 19 commercial regions now. Any other questions? Yeah. So his question was, Inspector Classic required a standalone inspector agent. Do we still need that, or is it completely agentless? So the answer is, uh, you still need the systems manager agent, but you do not need the uh, standalone inspector, inspector agent anymore. The reason was SSM agent we heard from the customers is already widely adopted and has far broader use cases than just security. So for those customers, it just becomes agentless because they're already using it. There was a question up here. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, so the question was, in some of the slides that look like inspector was scanning AMIs, are we doing that or are we just scanning the instances? So uh, today we are not scanning raw AMIs, but we are providing different views. So one of the things we learned from customers is that they, they all do their job in a different way and they're all creating dashboards for different purposes. And one, one set of customers, you know, uh, like Ankit was talking about with Uber, they, they want to regenerate their AMIs. So within the dashboard, and are we on that right yeah. now, you can see that one of the things we do is while we're not scanning the AMI, we do allow you to group that data by AMI. So you can take a look and say, oh, look, you know, AMI XYZ has the most findings that are critical. That's the one I need to target for recreation and relaunch. Um, you know, I would say stay tuned. You know, this is just kind of the, the, the beginning of the new inspector. And so I think it's easy to imagine you seeing us support a lot more resources in the future like AMIs. So uh, the question was, since we scan the static images, do we map it to the running containers also? Not at the moment. Uh, we are exploring such options. Uh, we, if we have to do it, we will start with mapping first, the images that are being used in ECS and EKS especially. Because one of the things you can imagine is, you know, for some customers, these container images turn over very quickly. And, you know, a container that's five days old may never be used. Um, or, it could be, or it could be used, as, you know. And so knowing that it's actually running is, is we, we've heard from, you know, security teams, that's really important to us. And, you know, so obviously that's something you would imagine we, we would do. Question? Yeah, so the question is, is this limited to EC2 and ECR, or can it do other types of images like RDS? Um, so today it is limited to EC2 and ECR. Yeah, uh, RDS is, is a managed service, so there's, there's, you know, we're not collecting data from the, those services. Go for it. So we do it account aggregation right now. So the question was, do we aggregate uh, the regional thing at the delegated admin level, right? I saw it come up and I enabled it on, on my account immediately and saw that it's per region right now. Yeah, it is, it's a regional service. But what you can do is uh, Security Hub recently launched a, uh, a feature for centralizing that. So you can use Security Hub for centralizing across region. But in Inspector, we consolidate across all accounts, but regionally. I saw a question back here. Yeah, so the question is, does it cover CIS and STIG? So Inspector V1 um, does cover CIS. Um, that is not covered by in, in, uh, the new inspector. Our, our intention is to make this inspector at parity with V1 um, so that customers feel comfortable completely moving to the new inspector. There were questions there. Got it. Uh, so his question is, does inspector allow custom configurations or custom rules? No. We, we felt like security teams told us that they don't need that overhead. So at the moment, we don't do that. So when, uh, when you say rule sets? No, let's say you found a way to find the right? And there would be, let's say, 200 of other scans that pop, there's an overlay on finding. So can we do one on scanning the data? So yeah, right now we don't expose our vulnerability intelligence database externally, uh, but we might in the future. Yeah. But, it, but if that's something you know, we teams feel like they're interested, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll write that down as, you know, as something yeah. coming. Yeah, well, one of the things is like, we will show our contact information and there is a email alias that we created, inspector 
hyphen feedback at amazon.com. Feel free to reach out. Uh, Rick and I continuously monitor that. And if we get an overwhelming response for a certain feature, we will definitely explore that. Because as you know, Amazon delivers 90% of the features dependent, uh, depending on the customer feedback. Uh, So uh, I'll answer that in two parts. For, so his question was, does it only identify vulnerabilities in OS layer or also in the application layer? So for EC2 instances, we do, we uh, discover everything installed through OS package managers. But if you are installing those applications through OS package managers, we do scan those also. And for uh, container images, like I mentioned, we support all programming languages also. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, uh, could you repeat that question? So, so the question is, since SSM agents can be uh, installed on on-prem instances also. Do we support on-premise uh, right now? No, we do not, uh, not at the moment. Yep. So, uh, for us, trying to do security for the code in a master-member setting, what I'm thinking is if we inspect our core level, for each member account and region, it still will send the financial security number, right? Correct. You, it's your wish, because right now, when we push findings to Security Hub, we push findings from one-to-one -one mapping in account, because there could be different security teams. Vulnerability management team might be just looking at inspector. Overall, central security team might be looking at Security Hub. So we do one-to-one -one mapping, and both can have their individual DAs. Yep. Question? Yeah, so the question was, is there a way for um, you to, and I'm just make sure I get your, your question correct. So the question was, um, it sounds like your question is, how do you know how active this image is? Yeah, so, so one of the things we did not kind of really talk about is that when you enable uh, Inspector, we only look backwards for images pushed within the last 30 days, and we kind of consider that the, the active set. There's two modes for ECR. One is I'm only going to scan it once on push. And you know, we, we're doing that because some customers just cycle through their containers so quickly. Like the, you know, continue, continuing to monitor just doesn't make sense for them. Then there's another mode called continuous. And if you select that, then for 30 days, we will continue to monitor that image. And if there is, you know, as we look at the CVE landscape that Kashish talked about, if there is a change that impacts that image, we will reassess it, and, and you may have new findings based on that. But it's, today, it's strictly based on kind of that push date. So then you stop after 30 days? We, in, in continual mode, we, we do stop after 30 days. That is correct. In the back? So his question was, do we provide remediation details? We do provide some remediation details right now, but in the near future, you will see we will also provide fixed in package data. So for example, this version is vulnerable. This version, you will fix that CVE. Any back, other questions? Back, right. How does it handle stopped in instances? So uh, right now, we are handling it as active uh, instances. Because some customers, what we heard was they just stop the instance overnight or over the weekend to save costs. And new CVs can still pop up during that time. So we do consider them as active instances at the moment. But uh, we are actually talking to a lot of customers to get that feedback. Do they want to consider it as a terminated instance or 
an, uh, as an active instance. Yeah, that, that's another option, definitely. Yeah, so basic scans uh, are still free of cost uh, as they are offered today. Enhanced scanning has a, a cost attached to it. For enhanced, uh, we charge nine cents per image for the initial scan. And for if you choose continuous scanning, for each automated rescan, we charge one cent. And, and another difference uh, between Inspector Classic, which was the one, you know, the rename for the, the service that launched in 2015. That, w that pricing for the EC2 assessments was every time you assessed it, we would charge you. Here, because we're, you know, we're, we're monitoring and we're assessing when we feel like we need to based on the landscape, we're charging you based on coverage hours. So it's, it's, it's very easy to predict based on how long your instance is running. If you're running the SSM agent and you have it configured correctly, then we're covering it the same amount of time and you're going to, you know, your charge is going to be very predictable based on that. But that is a difference between the old inspector and the new inspector. Uh, question over there. Is there any thought of adding common weakness enumerators, CW weakness? So the question was, is there any, um, is there any plan to add uh, common weakness enumeration, CWEs? Uh, not right now, um, but happy to take that feedback. Any yeah, other? Yeah, it's a little hard to see with the light, so please don't feel bad about shouting out your question. Is there plans to be able to customize the risk factor? No. Uh, actually, a lot of customers have asked that. We would rather ask you to tell us what you want to get included, because most of the times, most customers want the same things. So whatever you feed, feedback you give, we will in, try to include it so that all customers benefit from it. And one thing that um, we didn't really highlight, but when you looked at that findings detail, while we do have the inspector score, we've also preserved scores from NVD and from vendors. So as you, that data gets pushed into Security Hub or an event bridge, you're, you, you, know, you have access to all that data. And so if you feel like the vendor score is the one you want to standardize on or NVD, that, that data is there as well. We have talked about it, but there are no concrete plans yet. Uh, so the question was, uh, uh, he attended another session with CodeGuru, and he was uh, wondering if CodeGuru and Inspector will be integrated. Over there on the right. That, that's a good question. So he's asking, can, can you run Inspector Classic and the new Inspector together in the same account? The answer is yes. Since we built this service from ground up, we didn't use any components from V1, and you can use both in parallel. That being said, we will put a deprecation notice on Inspector Classic soon, a 12-month deprecation notice. Uh, so we will support it for some time until our, all our existing customers migrate to the new Inspector, but we do have plans to deprecate it. And if you are using Inspector V1 and you want to kick the tires on the new inspector, there is a free trial. So you can use it uh, for 15 days risk-free to understand if it, if it meets your needs and, and kind of see all, you know, see all the features and things that you know, we kind of only did a partial demo of today. Go ahead. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's difficult for us to kind of make any commitments up here, but obviously, you know, we, we know that there has to be a level of parity between the new inspector and the old one for customers who are using the, you know, the, the old one to feel I, comfortable moving. Yeah, his, his question was about reporting. So here we do allow exporting the findings uh, in JSON and CSV format. And you can do it in multiple ways. You can either try, you can export the complete set of findings through delegated admin, or you can add filters. So if you want to export only, let's say, for one account or two accounts, and, or only one CVRT, or only a specific CVE. So you can play around with filters, and you can customize as much as you want. And you can either choose to just download or export the whole finding list, or that filtered finding list. Yeah. 
And so, si similar filters apply to suppression rules also. So, Very, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, we're, I think we're out of time oh. here. So we are out of time, um, but if you have more questions, please uh, feel free to grab us. We're, we'll be here for a couple of minutes and then we can certainly talk to you outside as well. Thank you for joining. Yep.